Good morning, everybody. Good afternoon. Depends. I know we have people from all around the world come and join this. Uh, I'm excited about uh, this session, this World Retail Innovation Week session. Uh, it's wonderful to have you and wonderful to have Philip Ralph with us today. Um, to remind you, um, World Retail Innovation Week is uh, something we scrambled to put together to help all of us kind of focus on the future and uh, deal with today. And we went out to our community and we asked um, friends, peers, colleagues to contribute, to share, share their thinking. Um, we've had Philip uh, share his ideas before on, on PSFK stages. And uh, he was top of the list when we uh, kind of reached out and asked him to share the work, especially kind of the work he's, he's put into uh, beta, uh, the experience that he's created, the kind of rethinking um, of the beta experience and kind of the systems behind that as well. And so I'm excited to have Philip, Philip Rauber Beta kind of come along uh, and present his work today. Great, thank you, Piers. Uh, thank you again for uh, to you and Jeff for all the hard work of, of putting and pulling this together. Um, I know it's no small undertaking, but at the same time, I think it's it's really uh, powerful to show some of the things that are happening um, right now within within our communities as well as you know on, on a global scale. Um, so. Uh, again, this is obviously very new to me as well. Um, I think what I'm really hoping to get out of our time today is, is I'm going to, uh, I did throw some slides together and uh, we'll, we'll present. Um, I will have the kind of Q&A kind of functionality open um, and I'll go through and try to address all those questions. I'm not gonna do it in real time. Um, I'll wait till uh, I after walk through just some things. Uh, I'm really hoping today uh, I did put, like I said, to put some slides together, but really the intent of what I'm hoping for is that there's some, some really good dialogue that kind of can happen here. Um, obviously, we're going through very unprecedented times, um, especially at least for our uh, generations. Um, and I think it's really important um, that, you know, we have an opportunity, I think, to kind of, you know, we're probably all going through very kind of ranging kind of set of emotions. Um, I'll walk you through some of the things that have transpired for, for myself. Um, for beta over the last month, um, and um, as well as I think some of the trends and the things we're seeing within the industry right now, and and uh, we'll share that with you. And then at the same time, um, I think there's an opportunity maybe for us to to have a you know some some dialogue. So uh, with that, uh, you bear with me one moment as I pull up. So you know the question I really asked is you know what is the future of retail? I think a lot of us are kind of asking ourselves you know, many of those same questions right now. Um, you know, there's a, a lot kind of going on right now uh, in the world. Um, you know, we, if you really think about it, I'll kind of describe to you as kind of what was happening with, with beta and where we were kind of going. Um, you know, we kind of came off of a very strong year uh, in 2019. We doubled our footprint. We were expanding into new categories. We had international expansion going on. Um, you know, we were building a strong brand and, and really poised for, for really strong growth in 2020. Um, in the early part of the year, uh, in January, um, you know, we started hearing some rumblings some, from some of the makers and, and companies we were working with that they were starting to experience some problems uh, coming out of China uh, with the manufacturing and things were starting to, to slow down a bit um, and they were having some challenges. Um, to be honest with you, I think, you know, we, we probably took the, uh, didn't take those situations too seriously. Um, you know, there were just a couple of, a handful of partners and we thought all things would pass. Um, uh, was in uh, Dubai opening our store in the end of January and all of a sudden, you know, things started to kind of change a little bit. You know, we were starting to hear that, you know, the, the traffic in the Dubai mall um, because that there were uh, the lack of Chinese tourists and people come, coming in, you know, we're starting to, to have a small impact on things. And that was the first time I think I really understood that there was, this was potentially causing some problems. Um, by the time February started to, uh, um, roll around, um, you know, things were, uh, were a little bit, starting to become a little bit challenging in that we started to have some of the, the bigger contracts and things we were working on, you know, indicate to us that um, there was going to be, uh, you know, they were gonna hold and pause. Um, we were gonna be doing an activation at South by Southwest uh, and, and we were running and starting to run into some challenges in late February. And then all of a sudden, I think we realized that this thing was becoming very serious for us. 
um, and it was starting to become very challenging and difficult decisions were going to need to be made, uh, I think, with a lot of retailers. Um, you know, I obviously had an opportunity in January to come in and speak to people. Um, and at the time, um, uh, you know, I was really talking about kind of physical retail, you know, how it kind of drives growth. Um, and it, this is really where the, the industry was headed. It was really about experiential retail. It was about brands. Um, so, you know, things started to really kind of change and transpire in the, the, the physical, you know, kind of growth standpoint, um, you know, and all of a sudden, uh, you know, March comes and literally the world, you know, kind of starts to kind of come to a halt. Um, you know, there's a lot of things where, where all of us were really kind of wondering what the, what the next steps were. And I want to walk you through, um, I think, what was happening, what was transpiring and, and some of the things that we had to do at Beta. I think so far this month, it's in to be you know, completely transparent and honest with everyone. It's been a really shitty month, um, I think, for all of us. And so um, in a lot of different ways. Um, you know, obviously, the, you've got a, a worldwide pandemic that, that's happening. Um, and, you know, it's, it's bringing, I think, a lot of fear, uh, a lot of panic, you know, into the world. Um, there's a lot of challenges that are happening, I think, you know, in, in a lot of different ways. Um, but one of the things that we were faced with at Beta was, uh, you know, as things were, were starting to change and starting to evolve, um, we had to make some very difficult decisions. Uh, the first decision was whether or not we actually shut down our stores. Um, you know, in, like any retailer, um, you know, the, the vast majority of our business was happening in physical retail. That's what we've been working on for you know, most of the year um, uh, and most of the last five years of you know, being focused on, on having, a, you know, saying that physical retail uh, was not dead and that it was a place where, where people could go and, and could engage with, touch product. And then all of a sudden, you know, you, you think about it, I mean, you've got a business that, you know, it's all about touching, all about, you know, human interaction. And, you know, that is the thing that, you know, we were told that all of a sudden it was what we couldn't do. So, you know, but at the same time, we've always run the business and tried to be very ethical in, in how we kind of do it. It's always been a people first business. And so um, you know, we were challenged and said, okay, well, what do we do? We're not a large company. Do we shut down our stores before the head of the curve? What's going to happen um, with um, uh, what, what's going to happen with our stores? What's going to happen with our people? And ultimately, we made the decision that said, uh, you know, yeah, we were going to be one of the first ones out there uh, to to shut down our stores. In fact, I probably uh, and we shut it down. The, the, we announced that we were going to do that the day after Apple did. Um, and to be honest with you, if I had deep pockets, I would have been the first retailer in the, in the market to to close our stores down because it was the right thing to do. Um, not knowing what the repercussions were going to be from landlords or, you know, whether we would have to pay rent, how long we could pay our people and what it was going to do to the company. Um, well, fast forward a couple of days and, and after we shut down, um, you know, we really had to sit down and take a hard look and, and understand, you know, what was the long term impact on this. Uh, and, you know, as, as leaders in business, uh, you know, we had to make some business decisions. And in order to keep the company kind of going and in order to understand the long-term kind of outlook of that, you know, we made the difficult decision to ultimately, um, you know, in closing our stores, uh, it, we had to lay off a significant number of, of our corporate staff. We had to, the executives had to take, um, and the entire team actually ended up taking pay cuts and we ended up having to furlough our retail team. And I can tell you, it was the you know, most gut-wrenching and, and difficult decisions you, know, you have to make as a company. And in fact, during that time, um, you know, I sat down with my co-founders and ultimately made the decision to step down as the president of the company in order to free up some cash flow um, for the teams as well. Um, and so you know, that's kind of where the month really kind of started off, off for us uh, and some of the key decisions that we had to make. And so... You know, as we think about it, you know, I think the first and foremost, what, what's going to be, what's caused is that there's a lot of retailers that have had to sit down and really take account as to kind of who they are, what they're doing, and how they think about their businesses and what they want to be remembered for as they, you know, is moving forward. And so, you know, those are the things, you know, and the difficult decisions, you know, that I've been kind of, you know, uh, forced with um, and, and really kind of having to kind of look at. And it's been challenging. And, um, you know, I've, I've been going through, as I'm sure many of you, kind of a mixed range of emotions right now of, you know, what's going to be happening with my business, where are things going, you know, are we going into a recession? Um, you know, how is this that we can kind of really completely shut things down? 
Um, and so, you know, it's been challenging, you know, to say the least. Um, you know, if you look at the retail landscape, you know, it's very interesting in, the, in what we're kind of seeing. Obviously, you know, this is how, you know, uh, many of us are, are right, in, uh, are working out of kind of home offices or makeshift home offices in, in many cases. Um, you know, the, 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 the paradigm of retail is, has completely shifted uh, in the sense that um, uh, we now have kind of changed in, you know, if you, you walk into a grocery store and there was, a, of course, there was like this, this hoarding effect that was taking place, but, you know, half the shelves were, were kind of empty. You know, people are standing in line six feet apart to get into grocery stores. Um, and, uh, you know, things have definitely shifted online. Delivery services have, have, have really kind of picked up. And there's a lot of people that have, have started to benefit from this economy. But at the same time, you know, you look at things and it was this gig economy where, you know, all of a sudden, you know, people were, were, were driving Uber and Lyft and, and doing a lot of things. You know, now all of a sudden people are having to shift and figure out how that they can even make a, you know, a living. In many cases, um, a lot of people have been furloughed or let go. And it's really causing, I think, a lot of difficult times. And I think, um, uh, th thanks, uh, whoever said that, that slides were overrated and content's great. Um, I'll keep kind of going with things. And, and I appreciate, again, um, I'll, I'll pause and say I appreciate, uh, obviously, all of your understanding um, in, as we kind of kind of work through this. Uh, you know, again, it's, it is uh, you know, pretty unique, and it's also very kind of unique just talking to a screen without any feedback. So, um, you know, thank you uh, for everyone that's, that's, you know, kind of along for this ride. Um, nevertheless, uh, I think what, um, you know, I wanted to, to kind of share, and, and like I said, I wanted this to be kind of just, uh, you know, kind of a, an, an opportunity just to kind of speak a little bit from the heart. It's kind of how I'm kind of feeling and the things that are kind of transpiring right now um, with me, but, it, you know, also give you a little bit of a look and a glimpse into, I think what I do see is the future. Uh, so, you know, um, again, going through all of these type of things, and, and I live in San Francisco, and so you know, we've been um, under uh, you know, shelter in place for a little over two weeks now, or actually I think two weeks tomorrow. And um, you know, I have two kids. I live in a, uh, about a 17, 1800 square foot you know, flat, and um, you know, it can be challenging um, you know, at, at times. You know, yesterday it rained, and uh, it was about um, two o'clock and we've been trying to get out, you know, for kind of just some short exercise, you know, twice uh, a week and, or twice a day, excuse me. And, um, you know, yesterday, uh, we didn't have that chopper, that opportunity to get out in the morning and the kids were pretty restless. And so by two o'clock I said, guys, put your rain gear on, we're going out. And, um, you know, my wife and I were kind of looking at one another and it was one of those things where, uh, you know, we just, it was, it was a rough day. And, you know, I think, you know, everyone, we're going to have those rough days. Um, you know, but I think, you know, the reality is too, is there's people that are out there that are, are unhealthy and, and, um, are going through things and with, with family members and, and kind of, uh, that they're having worse days than us. And, you know, I kind of have sometimes had to put that in perspective, but I got home and, uh, finally the sun came out, it was about four 30 and you kind of go outside and it was really amazing just to see, you know, all people kind of coming out, um, you know, and I wouldn't say in droves because, you know, I live in a neighborhood, so it wasn't like there was like this, you know, mass um, type of um, exodus of people's homes, but you could definitely see people were, got, were out. And, and I lived, you know, close by uh, in the Presidio, which is a very wooded area. And there's this, if anybody have ever been to San Francisco, um, and when you do get an opportunity to ever kind of come back, or if you live in the Bay Area, there's an area in, in, in um, the Presidio kind of, it's called the wood line. And um, it's this, uh, this is where actually I wish I had an image to kind of, uh, to show with you, but I'll do my best to describe it. But it's this um, kind of like S shaped curve that goes through the woods and it's, you know, perfectly kind of, you know, kind of carved out. Um, and if, even if you, if you Google it right now, you can find it. So it's kind of this, like I said, this, this, this curved space, it's this absolutely gorgeous space. And I was walking through there when I had a t an opportunity finally to reflect on things and say, Wow, this is the first time, at least in modern history, um, that we as, an, as a, uh, not even as a nation, but literally as a planet have had the opportunity to hit the pause button and really stop what we're doing and to take an account of who we are, what we're doing as in, you know, as I think as, as humans, as individuals, you know, with families. Um, and, you know, there were people walking, thank you. It's, you know, I was, I'm 
plus that like, you know, I actually have an opportunity that this is you know, something that I, I literally live like five minutes away and, and can kind of get into a sanctuary like this, and especially in the city. And, um, you know, as, as I was walking through there, you know, it was really just kind of stopped and paused and said, you know what, I'm going to use this opportunity, you know, not only I think, you know, personally, you know, to look at things, but I think we all need to look at it and take an account of, you know, how we're kind of thinking about and what the next shift is going to be because it's an amazing opportunity. Um, and you know, where are we headed, um, as a, uh, uh, within the retail community, what are the things that we can kind of be doing? You know, and I know heard a conversation a couple of days ago when I was walking the kids from afar, there was individuals and the guy was saying how, you know, that he was, they were going out to eat right. Or they were, they were getting takeout regularly to continue to support local businesses. Um, and, and I think you're going to start to see that what this has done to retail is that, um, you know, there was this whole thing about the retail apocalypse that was happening a couple of years ago. This is the, in, in my opinion, finally, what's going to end, you know, a lot of bad retail. Um, and, you know, it's, it's unfortunate because it's going to come at the cost of a lot of jobs um, and, and a lot of heartache. And I think you're going to start to see the shift, right? There's a lot of you know, retailers that are pretty weak. And even, even the business model of retail, you know, your companies that we think of uh, as being very healthy, um, you know, they said you know, Nordstrom right now probably has eight months of cash on hand. I mean, you know, here's a, a business that, you know, a lot of people, I think, you know, really look up to, you know, great customer service and great things, you know, and I was really shocked to kind of see that, you know, I expected that from, you know, from the JC Pennies, the, the Macy's of the world, but, you know, really to hear about that with Nordstrom. And, but it really, it just goes to show you that the way that we've been kind of doing and thinking about business is that it really doesn't allow ever for pauses. It doesn't allow for any disruption to, to a business at a large scale. And I think we need to start thinking about things, you know, differently. Um, and I really, uh, truly believe while this is having a big impact on a lot of local retailers, um, it's having an impact on real estate. It's going to cause, I think, a, um, it's going to cause things to, to really reset. And like I said earlier, um, having an opportunity to be able to pause, um, you know, and see some of the effects that are actually happening, you know, to, um, uh, to the environment um, you know, to our local economies. I mean, it really is poking, you know, holes in even our healthcare system um, and uh, to the health of us as individuals and really kind of calling into question, you know, to say like, what are the things that we need to be doing? And, um, you know, I think through this walk here, it really was this really powerful moment that I had to stop feeling sorry for myself because I was in a lot of ways and, and really trying to play the victim role of, oh, you know, I'm you know, we're going to probably be under house arrest for another, you know, four to five weeks and, and this and this and that and start really thinking of an opportunity of like, how do we can think about the change that we're going to bring back. And I really believe it's going to bring and allow for a lot more community. I think, you know, local businesses, um, while they're hurting now, I think are going to thrive because um, people are going to really think about things, you know, in, in being able to support those and they're going to want more curated experiences. Um, and connecting, I think, with, with people in, in their communities. Um, and you're seeing a lot of that right now. Now, you know, there are things that are, you know, I'm not naive to say that things will eventually get back to normal and we'll get back into our habits. But what this is doing and this is changing is they say habit forming usually happens, right? When you, when you do something you know, repetitively, we are doing things repetitively. And I think that is allowing, you know, and causing that change. The, the usage of video chat, which, you know, a lot of companies were using, but a lot of people were very skeptical of, it's saving people commutes, right? It's giving people an, two plus hours back of their lives. Um, and, and they're putting them at home. It's allowing them to have, you know, um, uh, you know dinner and, and, and meals with their families. And I think it's really going to be something that's going to, I think, you know, just really change the dynamic of, I think, even the retail landscape. Um, I think real estate, obviously, costs are going to be a lot cheaper because and, and it's going to bring an opportunity for um, a lot of more unique businesses you know, to the forefront. So you know, that's really, I think, kind of, you know, I wanted to have an opportunity for me to kind of share to you, like how I'm feeling and some of the range of emotions. And I think where I'm kind of starting to kind of really think and, and see things as they move forward. Um, you know, my next you know, step is as well is going to be um, you know, I'm, I'm working on, on a new project, um, you know, and it's going to embody, I think, a lot of the things that I'm kind of, you know, talking about and, you know, look forward to being able to share with th that with a lot of you in the future. Um, you know, with that, you know, I wanted an opportunity and, um, you see if I can maybe, uh, you know, you'll feel some, some Q and A or, if, you know, inspire some dialogue, um, and just wanted to pause right there. That's, that's great, Philip. Um, 
I don't know if you can see the Q&A box at the bottom, but there's a number of questions that have come in. I guess I can. So uh, let me see if I can take them in order here. Um, and whichever you want to pick, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, there's a question here about uh, you know, do you see any ways in manifesting you know brain experience in in virtual in you know 3D and AR? Um, yeah, I, I think uh, there, there's absolutely uh, an, an opportunity to do that. You know, we we were one of the first ones um, actually ever to have you know the Oculus Rift uh, in our stores when when that first came out years ago, and I remember. Um, giving people, we were, in fact, we were doing more demos of Oculus on a per day basis than any retailer in the world. And um, it was, you know, fascinating seeing kind of people start to engage with and it's uh, realizing that, you know, it's not necessarily becoming a, a mainstream thing um, from how people use it at home as much as it is more of a commercial tool. And I think you're starting to see there's a lot of the companies pivot, you know, to that maybe outside of gaming. And um, you know, I think there's a definitely a huge opportunity to um, again you know, bring experiences to life, you know, from a global perspective. Especially as look, I mean, people are going to be skittish to travel and, and go places, and, and still want to experience those things. It's going to take time for us to to embrace that. So I think there's definitely an opportunity, you know, there. Um, let's see. What do you believe the new normal will look like post COVID? Will it be more of the same? And will we all flock back to the malls? Might the trend of experiential retail be harmed at, at, at risk? You know, what are the top three action items, you know, retailers should be taking to be leading to tomorrow? Um, look, I don't think we're all going to be flo flocking back to malls. I mean, you start to see um, you know, some semblance of what's happening in China and in, um, you know, I saw pictures of some of the malls in Singapore, people are going back. Um, you know, there's, you know, they're having to create queues and there's, you know, safety precautions. It's going to be, I think that's going to exist for a while. Um, I, I think it's going to also, uh, you're going to see that, you know, depending on gender, you know, how, you know, I think different cultures, um, I think different age groups are going to treat things differently. I mean, you're already seeing a lot of the younger, you know, folks who are not, it's taking them a little bit longer to embrace the, the whole aspect of social distancing. I think that, you know, they're going to be craving for, you know, uh, socialization. I mean, I, you know, it's all the other day, you know, I was, I've, my kids are uh, nine and seven and we were walking and, and, you know, there were a bunch of teenage girls that were uh, out walking and they saw one another and they grabbed, you know, ran towards one another and started hugging one another. And my daughter was like, why are they doing that? They're not allowed to do that. And, and I, and I just don't think you're going to be, a, once this happens, you know, once I think, uh, the, the floodgates kind of lift a little bit and, and we think, see people kind of, um, coming back to normal, you know, there's going to, I think the, the younger generation is going to be the one that I think actually gets us back to normal faster. I think because they're the ones who don't see those boundaries as much as we do. Um, so it will take time. Um, I think experiential retail is going to have to shift as well, but I think, you know, we're still going to be craving experiences and unique experiences and, and what that exactly looks like, um, I think is going to change as well. Um, and I think, you know, there's going to be an opportunity, I think through technology to do that. Um, but, you know, even if you look at, you know, the, the delivery services and, and some of the unique, you know, the restaurants that are having to get kind of unique um, in how they do that. Uh, I saw that there's a lot of, you know, Michelin star chefs and other chefs who are actually preparing meals at home and letting people share in with that, you know, and, and how, what a great, you know, opportunity that is. It's something that probably would have never happened otherwise. So uh, I think you, you're going to see, you know, some, some different things kind of transpire like that. Um, do you see your business growing online with no physical retail stores? Um, I still don't think that, um, I think online retail uh, cannot exist without some sort of physical presence, whether that be, you know, in the capacity of, um, you know, delivery um, or, you know, some opportunity or outlet, you know, again, you know, maybe, you know, it's more of partnering with local businesses in different communities. Um, but I just don't think, you know, outside of Amazon, there really has been no, you know, peer play online retailer that's been able to, to succeed. And um, I just still don't think that we're going to be able to deal with without physical in the future. How are you doing with your time, Philip? Uh, I'm good. Okay. We'll keep going until you, you manage it. Yeah. All right. Okay. Um, what new habits learned over this social distancing period are you likely to stick 
once we back or once we're back into our normal routines, should we try to get ahead of that and embrace those potential new shopping habits? Well, I think from a personal you know perspective, um, I think it's you know time. Um, you know, I've always I walk to work. Um, I'm fortunate enough that I can do that, or uh, used to, I should say, and so. Um, you know, that was time for me to kind of really reflect on time and, and, and be able to, to kind of process and think about my day. But, you know, now even being at home um, and you know, not feeling rushed to get out of the door, um, spending time with my kids, you know, and my family and, and doing those kind of things, I think is, is um, and, but it's, I'm also, what I'm missing is I am missing the ability to go down the street and, you know, talk to the, 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 some of the local, you know, businesses who I usually will kind of frequent. And I think those are the things that, again, I think we're going to, we're going to bring back um, and want to, I think, bring back in, into um, our, our mindset. I was, I was reading something in the New York Times yesterday, and it was talking about how we literally as a society need physical interaction and engagement. Um, it, it actually can improve our immune system. Um, you know, they, they would say like physical touch and, and, and other type of things. Um, and those are the things that, you know, in, actually keep us healthy, but at the same thing, they're saying those are the things right now that are, you know, potentially create risk for us. But I think we're going to have to kind of get back to those type of, you know, you know social norms, um, and, and some of those habits. And I think the other really unique kind of habit, I think forming thing for, for me is, is in a lot of people is that this, you know, what we're doing right now you know, a lot of times, you know, in maybe having a kid running in the background or whatever. I mean, there's a, a great video you know, that's gone viral from a couple of years back where, you know, a gentleman was, was talking, I think he was on the BBC, um, about uh, you know, financial advice or whatever, and his kids run into the room. And, and, you know, that was maybe not socially acceptable, you know, a while back, whereas now it's, it's, it's understandable that it's going to happen. And, and I think that's a beautiful thing um, is that we're, we're accepting the imperfection of, of our lives and, and allowing people to kind of maybe take a step into, you know, what our homes look like and, and what, what that life is and under that and outside of maybe the facade that we try to kind of you know, put on. Um, agree with you that real estate costs will fall dramatically providing opportunity for new retail uses. What kind of uses do you see uh, throwing themselves into physical retail? Um, yeah, it's, it's going to really be interesting. Uh, you know, you, you saw Taubman kind of come out, um, uh, I think, in the last two days and you have to pay your rent. You know, Cheesecake Factory said that we're not paying her rent. Um, it's going to be interesting to, to, to watch this kind of whole you know, thing play out. Um, but I, I think, you know, what you're going to see is that, you know, there are going to be you know, people who maybe never thought that they could actually afford real estate or get into real estate doing different things. Um, I think you're going to probably see a lot more smaller outpost where, you know, people aren't taking as much square footage, but, you know, maybe our, our, that had online businesses will start using uh, space differently as, you know, maybe from a delivery perspective. Um, I think, uh, again, I, you're going to start to maybe even see businesses that one, one time were, were relegated for commercial use for retail and for office space maybe even being, you know, transformed and, and tear, torn down in some cases because it can be public space. Because if we don't necessarily, you know, um, need as much commercial space because all of a sudden it's become socially acceptable for people to work from home on a lot more broader scale, even for more traditional companies, um, it can be really unique to see what happens there. And um, I think you're going to maybe find people encouraging and trying to figure out, you know, really unique uh, usage of, of public space. Um, especially in, in more urban um, areas, uh, which I think would be really unique. And it's also, like I said, going to give opportunity, I think, for, for you know, smaller businesses to, um, uh, to maybe continue to expand or even think about you know, local you know, people that maybe uh, never thought it was possible that, uh, that they could actually own a, a retail front or shop front. Um, Will the current situation make us want more human interaction, touch, play, learn, socialize, or less human interaction? I think it, it, it depends. I think at first it's going to be less human interaction I mean, in some cases. Um, but I think, you, I think as, as people begin to get comfortable, and again, I think, it, like I said, it's going to be, it will start from, from kids first um, that will you know, want to embrace their friends more. Um, and, and as that starts to become, I think, socially acceptable again, uh, I think it eventually will, 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 you know, will bring it back uh, into um, 
more, I would say, a those of us that you know like as we get older right i mean we we have the ability to i think our our brains and our ability to to think um are are the most our greatest asset but at the same time it's it's also what prohibits us from a lot of times and um i think uh you know eventually that will change all right so i'm just trying to kind of go through the questions in order here um bear with me one moment Um, use your memories about crisis situations are short lived and, and why we're in it, we give it our, and while we're in it, we give it our full attention, but then can we move on? Uh, what will we do now to kind of create, you know, signposts to remember the key messages of the moment? Um, I think the difference here is, 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 um, and I was thinking about this exact same question yesterday. Um, I think if you look at, this is the first time that something on, happened on this scale globally that's really affected people since World War II. And, uh, and I'm guessing that most people, uh, that there's probably nobody on this thread that was uh, alive then, um, but probably, you know, our, our parents or, or maybe in some cases, grandparents were. were. Um, and the uh, unique thing, I think, about this is because it, it's been on a global scale and because it's taking the length of time that it's taking, it, it is actually making habit changing, you know, forming changes. And I think that to me is what is, is different than, you know, even if you take something like, uh, you know, in the US, you know, probably you know, the one of the last major events, you know, was, that, that really kind of brought a country together was around 9-11. Um, but again, that was primarily focused on, you know, only a couple of you know, New York and a couple of other kind of key areas. Um, and while it affected the country, it didn't really have, I think, that, that impact on everyone, the way that this is happening, I think, on a global scale. And it didn't happen in, you know, over uh, you know, a period of, of weeks, if not months. And I think that's going to be the difference. I think that's going to change you know, behaviors and why this one's going to be a little bit different. And I also feel like you know, the, the impact it's having on the environment and just being able to kind of see what, you know, what happens when you can actually hit the pause button on industrialization for uh, for for some time and you really understand the impact and i think that's going to cause a movement amongst a lot of individuals to say look we need to change our behaviors i mean i thought it was already phenomenal that you know china has announced that i think that they're banning you know plastic bags uh in the country and will you know, the goal is to get rid of them even in small markets by 2025. Um, how do you feel about re all remote marketing, like over text messaging? You know, I mean, there's already a bunch of, you know, there's companies, um, uh, a company called, uh, uh, Iris Nova is the parent company, but they own a company called Dirty Lemon, um, which their sole distribution of their, their drinks, it's a beverage company, um, is through text messaging. Um, they now actually are in physical, you know, in retail, so you can pick them up in convenience stores, but you can't, originally you couldn't even order them online. It was really done through text messaging. And um, I think it's a really unique way to kind of think about things. And I do think it's gonna, um, you'll see more of it in the future. Uh, what is the term of trust with the idea of pause you're talking about? Trust usually means there'll be 24 seven, you know, for us. Um, yeah, I think, look, it, there's pause, but there's trust. Uh, and I, I would say that of all the things that I talk about, one of the things that we have to be very careful of is the caveat is that um, you know, throughout this whole thing, we've given up a lot of civil liberties. And um, I think it's probably the one piece that I think is, is concerned and scared me the most um, is how readily uh, we've all said, Oh, well, this is just about health and, you know, we need to be careful of the things that we're doing and we're just going to stop and, and accept everything for what it is. And, and I think those are the things where we also, again, I think, again, it goes back to innovation where we have to continue to question you know, and, and we have the right and authority, especially, you know, again, I, you know, I know there's a, a large group of you know, folks from different countries out there, but I think, you know, most of um, live in, in a, you know, a democratic, you know, society where we actually have the opportunity and we have those rights. And I think it is still important that we actually, you know, um, you can't give up necessarily trust, 
uh, and you, sh you should question things. And we need to make sure that we're, you know, we're continuing to have, I think, very sound debate around things. I had reached out to the CEO of a company who'd, who'd made a very controversial post on something uh, on LinkedIn. And, um, you know, I reached out to him personally and said, by the way, I agree with you. I said, but I'll be honest with you, I'm not ready to, and this was about a week and a half ago, and I said, I'm not ready to go out and start sharing my opinions on these type of things, even though I support what you're saying here. Um, and he responded, he's like, I just hope that, you know, like we can just have very sound and educated debate around these type of things. And I think that that's very important that we do that because it is, um, I think right now we're in a very strong moment of trust um, amongst other with, with ourselves, but at the time, you know, I think that will start to wane. Um, and we need to make sure that I think those are things that we're doing, but it goes back to, I, to my opinion of using technology to build community, but then also getting back and having that physical interaction within our own communities. Um, yeah, our effective forecasting is terrible. Um, you know, how will we remember these important lessons? I, I, yeah, I agree. I mean, it's look, um, I think there's some businesses and in, in, in people that remember, um, you know, very vividly. Um, I think sometimes the, the best thing you can do is you're not maybe going to remember all of the, you, I'll give you a personal, um, my wife and I kind of always joke about this because, you know, she always remembers everything about the kids, you know, kind of growing up and, you know, the, how arduous or painful something was. I vividly can kind of remember it, but I don't necessarily, it doesn't necessarily stick with me. And I think, to be honest with you, I think as, as humans, if we, if we always remembered all of those things, we probably would actually never, you know, continue as a society and continue to procreate. Um, if we remembered all of the bad times, you have to remember, I think, you know, in, in understand. And so I think it's breaking that apart and saying, you know, what are the things that you, you just, your, the mistakes we just, you can't continue to make. Um, and, uh, you know, we used to do that, I think, um, even as a, as a business, you know, had to kind of force ourselves. I think that that comes down to you know, making sure that you have you know, sol solid board members, solid, you know, executives and leadership and, and people that can remember that and to push on that to ensure that we're not making, you know, those you know, mistakes over and over again. Um, and it really just comes to, down to strong leadership. Um, and, 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 but at all levels, it doesn't have to be at the top. You can question and push back at any level that you are in, I think, with an organization, especially if you work for a company, you know, that empowers that kind of thinking. Um, let's see. Uh, how, do you f how do we build resilience into systems so finely tuned to just in time and zero stock? Um, Great question. Uh, you know, I, I think it's, this is going to cause, I think a lot of, um, you know, there, there's going to be you know, things that we just don't necessarily know. Uh, uh, you know you're not going to be able to predict, right? I mean, nobody was, I mean, was going to predict, well, I guess, you know, I think nobody's going to predict that people are just going to start hoarding toilet paper, but if you've ever been on a snowstorm in, in the Northeast, you know, that's what people go out and they buy just a ton of toilet paper and bread. Um, but there are a lot of things I think that you, you can't, you know, my neighbor works for Clorox, uh, and, um, you know, he was telling me yesterday, you know, as we were kind of talking, you know, you know, from our stoops, um, that, you know, he, you know, he's busier than ever. And, you know, there's obviously just certain things you just, you're not going to necessarily be able to kind of predict, you know, when, when those type of things happen. Um, and I think, you know, it goes back to making sure that, you know, you have very sound supply chain, um, but it comes down to innovation. Look, you know, Dyson in 10 days was able to create ventilators, right? I mean, and it starts to show you what happens. I think we become too heavily regulated as a society to try to protect ourselves against litigation and other things that you see when you, when you get rid of some of the regulations, how quickly we can mobilize as, as, um, uh, as a world, right, of the things that we're being able to produce and being able to, to, to get ready, you know, for. And, and, and it's pretty remarkable, like companies that are going from producing, you know, alcohol to all of a sudden, you know, producing hand sanitizers out, of, sanitizers out of the same plants. We have the capability to do these types of things. It's just, we choose not to. And I think that's where the resilience kind of comes is, is making sure to say like, we can be completely flexible. And I think that's one of the, the, the amazing things that I think you're seeing from this right now. We have the ability to do it. We've either chosen not to because, you know, we just make excuses. We never wanted to pivot. We didn't think that that was possible, something that we could do. 
Um, <clears throat> but we can. And, and I think, you know, there's so many great stories of doing that. And I think those are the things where, again, you know, you have to kind of go back, you know, within you, uh, your companies and, and, and show that, like, look, these are the examples of, of what we can do and, and how you can mobilize when, when you really feel like that there is a, a need and opportunity to do so. A uh, couple more questions here. Try before you buy is, is going more digital. Uh, what are some of the interesting, impressive startups in the space to keep an eye on? Um, I'm trying to kind of think right now. Uh, if there's anybody that has anything that you have or or suggestions, you know, feel throw them throw them into the chat, and I can uh, I can you know, throw them out at the group. I'm, right now, I'm kind of drawing a blank on that. Um, but let me let me give it some thought here as I answer a couple more of the other questions. Um, do you see more uh, taking an approach of minimizing quantities of consumers and stores as startup as, as a start? This could build to a greater access. I think. Um, I think not only minimizing quantities, I think we're going to become, I don't want to say an, an anti-consumerism, um, but you're going to see a lot less um, unnecessary purchases, in my opinion. Um, you know, one of the interesting things, right, is, is you look at, and uh, I was even having this conversation last night, like, what are the things that you think if, if you've, as you're kind of you know, there's individuals who, you know, um, my wife has family in Italy and we were talking to them yesterday and, uh, you know, they've been in indoors, you know, a lot longer than we have now and, and are going through, you know, I think a more difficult time than we are here in, at least we are here in California, even though I know things are, are getting you know, worse in New York. Um, you know, we're talking to them, but if you think about the things that we are not doing today or utilizing today, um, it's pretty remarkable, right? I think you're, most people are going to look at, you know, outside of you, maybe you're spending on food, your credit card bill is probably going to drop, um, you know, quite a bit this month. And, um, you know, you really take an account of like, do we need those type of things? And I think a lot of people are going to be asking those questions. You know, do you need to purchase this? Is this a necessity? Um, or is that something that, you know, I can, um, you know, kind of live without? But it's also interesting too, if you, I was looking at, uh, I saw something today of like, um, like, board games, bicycles, um, indoor gym equipment, some of the things that are, you know, people are, you know, per making more purchases of. But I definitely feel like, um, you know, the amount of quantities and the amount of consumption will drop in a lot of areas in a lot of ways. Um, and I think that's something that um, you, you also have to look at, like, are there different services that one can provide um, that, you know, instead of buying something new, can you fix the old one that you actually had? And I think you're going to be people you know, starting to think about that, you know, maybe indifferently. I thought it was very interesting. Uh, I saw also something from Walmart the other day where they said that their, um, the purchases of tops and bottoms are not being kind of matched, matched appropriately. So people, because of video chats, are buying more shirts, but they're not necessarily buying pants to match it because nobody sees them. Um, do you think Wall Street will, if at all, adjust how we measure success post COVID? Um, I, I, I wish I, I wish the answer was yes. I don't think it. Um, it in certain industries, I do think that they're that it's going to have to just change on, on what they think. Um, but you know, I think as a whole, it's not going to change the the way that that that, that thinks. I think hopefully in retail that some of the, the, that thinking, because the numbers are going to be so skewed for Q2 um, that, that there's maybe some, some different thought and kind of approach and kind of put towards things. But you know, there's definitely going to be, I think, a more towards a push of, you know, um, ensuring profitability, you know, looking at cash flow. And I do think it's going to change the model of most retailers. It's going to have to change the way that they're thinking about things because, and that we're thinking about things, because, you know, if another crisis happens, I just don't think you can survive. Um, you know, those companies will be surviving the same way. And I just don't think the government's going to be there to bail them out. No, I think I, first of all, I would want to, I want to thank everyone for, for joining today and, and uh, for your time greatly appreciated. Um, really obviously appreciate, uh, you know, all of the comments, all of the questions um, and the feedback and um, 
I, I know it's it's unique and interesting and and you know sorry you know like I said I had a few slides there but again also thank you for for kind of you know, being uh, allowing me to be kind of you know open and honest and transparent with you and and you know, kind of you know let you know kind of how I feel um, and, and how things are going uh, I think it's important I think that we we share with one another um, and um, I think this is what's ultimately you know this type of kind of dialogue and is is, is is almost kind of therapy I think for a lot of us. So. Yeah. Well, it's a pleasure. It was, uh, thank you so much for all those candid words. You know, you've been an entrepreneur and pioneer who we've been watching, you know, build this, um, this wonderful new vision. And um, it, uh, we appreciate you kind of just sharing the can you know, candid view about what has happened and how, you, how you're going to respond. And I think we can all take uh, a lot of uh, good points there and we can build on that ourselves. So thank you again, Philip. I really appreciate that. Thank you very much. And thank you to everyone uh, that joined us today. Greatly appreciate it. Take care, everyone. Be safe.